Theosophy, or the Theosophical Principle, has been a motivating influence on many prominent people. From Einstein to the great 18th century inventor and scientist, Benjamin Franklin, to the early and lifelong member of the Theosophical Society, Thomas Edison, this is the common background of truth upon which they all draw the perennial philosophy, as Aldous Huxley called it. And the scientists of the mind, too, have found echoes in theosophy. Carl Jung, Nietzsche, Schweitzer, all had known and documented affinities with the concept of reincarnation, which, as we know, is basic to theosophy. Stephen Hawking, a Big Bang, אמר לפני כמה חודשים בעיתונות הישראלית טובה שהאלוקים מבלבל אותנו. המדענים יודעים שיש מציאות אלוקית. הם רק באים להסביר איך נעשה הבריאה. לא מי עשה, המדע לא מתעסק במי עשה, אלא באיך נעשה, זה ההבדל, זה הטעות שלכם. המדע אומר אני מתעסק ביש. יש לי חומר, אני יכול לבדוק אותו. אני לא יכול להתעסק באין שאני לא רואה, מדע לא יכול להתעסק באין. אז הוא אומר, אחרי שאני רואה חומר, אני אומר כך. Science gathers evidence to support or reject the hypothesis of a particular theory that would deal with origin. And so the role science plays is as an objective evidence gatherer. Is that human a product of natural processes? long periods of time, evolution, or must there have been intelligence behind that human? I am absolutely astounded when I realize that in our society, the conventional answer to the question I've just asked is that that human being is a product of natural processes and long periods of time. To me, it's astounding that so many people have fallen for that silly idea. If it takes intelligence to make an arrowhead, Why doesn't it take even more intelligence to create a human? Just the, the human brain alone is three pounds of the most com one of the most complex assemblages of matter known in the universe. Now there's a lot of evolutionists who think I have a one pound brain. No. We all have three pound brains. And this brain consists of about a hundred billion brain cells or neurons. And a typical neuron is connected to over a thousand other neurons. Now imagine that picture going into the back of your television set. And here's a junction. And radiating from that junction are a thousand wires. Each wire going to another junction. And that complex pattern repeated in different, slightly different forms a hundred billion times. And you find somebody who believes that natural processes did that, and I'd like them to look me straight in the eye and tell me all about it. That is absolutely incredible. And yet that's what's being taught in our school. And you and I, we are paying for that. You have got a fantastic amount of information built into your body. You are intricately designed. You are extremely complex. Now, From time to time, mathematicians have asked a very natural question. Could natural processes, evolution, operating throughout the entire visible universe for billions and billions of years, could it produce these 4,000 books we see stacked up here? Or could it produce just the genetic material we know is in a bacteria, maybe one book's worth? Every study that I'm aware of, and I try to stay on top of all of them, have reached the same conclusion. No way, not even close. Probably the most thorough study of this nature was done at the Wist Star Institute, Philadelphia, several years ago. Fifty mathematicians, biologists, got together one summer to wrestle with this question. Dr. Murray Eden, who is from MIT, he's one of the organizers of that conference. He put it this way. He said that based on our understanding of the laws of chemistry and physics, what we know about randomness, we see no way. tremendous complexity in life can come about.